JWT's global CEO Tamara Ingram was in the capital recently with the agency's South Asia CEO Tarun Rai. We caught up with the two maverick leaders to talk about how demonetization is pinching creative agencies and the impact of the US presidential elections on quarter one ad spends in 2017. The duo also opened up about the harassment controversy that plagued the agency earlier this year and now how the agency is leading the industry on its gender diversity agenda. Listen in. Tamara Tarun, welcome to NDTV. And just to give our viewers a reference, Tamara, uh, you know your visit to India happens at a very opportune time. It's a very critical time because the country is going through some, uh, you know, major policy changes, demonetization to be specific. Tarun, this is your second interview with NDTV since you got elevated to the role of the South Asia CEO of JWT. And uh, welcome back once again. You know, like we said last time, he's one of the most respectable leaders in the Indian advertising industry. Tamara, coming back to you, this is. your first visit to india as the global ceo of jwt so what were some of the changes that were asked to incorporate into the organization the agency absolutely thrilling to be in india and uh, before i talk about changes i just love to talk about how successful i feel uh, our indian operation is which is probably why i'm here uh, under tarun's leadership uh, you know we've grown uh, 20% and seen extraordinary success in new business and i feel that's due to um the wonderful culture that uh, tarun has uh, created a culture of hunger a culture of collaboration and uh, great work and if you say to me therefore what what am i trying to do in uh, j walter thompson uh i want to continue with our real focus on creativity i want to ensure that we have a diversity of talent and in the leadership position and to really sure we have great diverse capability in order to achieve and get ourselves really relevant and continue to be ahead of the world you were elevated to the role of the global ceo after your predecessor mr gustavo martinez faced a controversy regarding harassment what are some of the measures that you know the global jwt as an organization has undertaken to sort of stay away from those kind of instances the extraordinary thing about j walter thompson is it's been around for over 152 years in today's world my, my fundamental belief is we need to be divergent in our thinking and in our leadership the key thing that we're really trying to do in order to continue that growth is to make sure we have diversity of talent in in all leadership positions and tarun how are you ensuring that sort of a thing doesn't happen at jwt india i mean harassment at workplace or gender bias at workplace is prevalent across agencies i mean not just indian agencies but internationally as well but as an agency what are you doing you're right it's a very important question and i think um, uh, issues like this um, Uh, this the culture plays a huge role and to me the culture starts at the top so yes it starts with tamara and it's it's going through the organization through people like me who are part of her uh, leadership team and i'm very lucky that uh, 50% of our leadership team is actually women communicating this to the rest of the organization becomes easier if my leadership team has got gender diversity Uh, which is 50-50 we are lucky but that doesn't mean that we are not conscious of the fact that uh, this is something that we have to guard against every day uh, a lot of times people are uh, unintentionally behaving in a particular manner and uh, we have to be uh, they don't may, may not mean it but we have to be uh, deliberately conscious of the fact that culture needs to be built on a daily basis you know it's not like a diktat moving on to the topic of demonetization is that really affecting creative agencies tarun because that's clearly affecting media agencies approximately 300 to 600 crores of advertising is currently on hold and may get cancelled in the next 3 to 6 months if our clients business is getting affected in the short run which it is uh, the the knock on effect is going to be on first the media agencies because uh, their remuneration is directly linked to the media spends and then to creative agencies also because a lot of clients are remunerating us on retainer fees and uh, for us uh, uh, our so calendar there's year not uh, any kind of money exchange but is there a dip in sentiments are there any there particular is. brands that are saying that you know let's put some of our advertising on hold for uh, for the well, moment course, and maybe there is, let's there see is a lot of discussion there is a lot of discussion and in fact uh, Tam and I have been meeting uh, clients over the past few days and uh, this has always been uh, uh, the topic of conversation okay. should 
should we, should we not? Uh, okay. For how long should we defer it? Because it's also dangerous to defer it for too long because uh, when the tide turns, uh, the brands which did not drop their share of voice uh, precipitously are the ones who are going to gain. But is, is the uh, business affected? Uh, very much so. A lot of our clients are in the FMCG space and their business certainly is affected. Those companies that invest in their brands and continue to find ways of um, looking after them will, will actually grow. Moving on to the other big thing that happened uh, you know, this year in November is the US presidential elections. The outcome was completely different from what opinion polls, election experts, agencies, data collectors, all of them had collectively predicted. Do you see a gap agencies and data collectors uh, really need to sort of work on how data is collected A and B how it's analyzed. Well you're going to have to forgive this what seems like a terrible plug but in <laughs> fact J. Walter Thompson did predict uh, Donald Trump was going to win. Which is why I said <laughs> most of the agency. It predicted the outcome by looking at the motivational questions about anger and about the desire yeah. for change. Yeah. It didn't look at who are you going to vote for? Because people don't always say or act, they don't always do what they say. True. So very interestingly, um, when we look at data now, we need to look at the human motivations behind the data in a slightly more complex way than just believing what people are going to say. So I think it will change the nature of the way that we receive data. What's your take on this, Tarun? I think there is a bit of a disconnect uh, between uh, what's go really going on and, and what, what uh, we talk to each other and believe <laughs> what's going on. Yeah, yeah. But is that going to have any impact on Q1 spends? Clearly some of the narrative for many of us has felt very uncomfortable in the whole election. However, uh, making America great again uh, has meant and Donald Trump's investment policies uh, that he's declared has meant there's a renewed confidence one can see. So I think actually in the short term, uh, maybe three or four years, let's call that, there'll be a reinvestment in North America, a renewed confidence, and that will probably have a very positive effect. Now, media agencies are doubling up as creative partners for the clients. Will creative agencies do the same? That's up next on the show along with some best Christmas ads of the season that's just begun. So stay tuned and don't go anywhere. How are you as an agency geared up to take the challenge of technology, data, digital, all combining and all becoming an active part of what the entire creative industry is all about? Traditional agencies, legacy agencies have often been criticized for not keeping pace with what's really happening. We've grown, uh, Tarun and his leadership in India has grown 20% mm -hmm. with a, a win of 140 brands for precisely the opposite view. It is because um, we need to bring things together okay. because people people receive messages from wherever whenever that pulling that together that being really 360 has become even more important you know media agencies this is how they're approaching it they're also offering creative services besides um, you know their media services so agencies like Max's they have content creation arms what about creative agencies will creative agencies anytime soon start looking at media a couple of our digital agencies are also buying media because uh, uh, buying media on uh, on digital is very different from buying media in traditional media because in on digital content and media are so closely interlinked that sometimes it makes sense for the content creators to actually be buying uh, digital. So it's happening, but, but you're right. Uh, it's not just the media agencies trying to in encroach on the so-called traditional areas of uh, what the creative agency was doing. Even consultants are. So there is uh, much more for everyone to do. The key is going to be who pulls in all these disparate platforms together. At the end of the day, there is one brand message to be delivered to one consumer. So integration is clearly the way Absolutely. forward for all creative agencies. Integration yeah. and collaboration. Also, the other challenge that creative agencies often face is that of talent retention. You know, because you have so many creative outlets that are part of the, uh, the, the, uh, the creative advertising fraternity. You have arts, you have rappers who are also part of independent filmmakers, digital content creators who are as young as, um, you know, perhaps 25 or 30 who are running their own businesses. So how do you deal with that talent retention challenge? Uh, when I joined, that was around the time I joined, our uh, uh, attrition rate was 42%. Okay. Uh, now, and we are in the month of November, 
September, it's down to 19%. So, so we have been able to retain talent. We have actually uh, made sure that we give uh, our people enough opportunities and create a culture of fun. Uh, the only thing is that maybe, maybe we have not uh, afforded as many opportunities for our people. We have got people from uh, Google and Facebook and Snapdeal and, uh, okay. and Paytm. Uh, it depends on what kind of opportunities are affording them. And we are lucky that in J. Walter Thompson Company, we have uh, we don't even uh, we don't just have the the traditional agency. Uh, we have got uh, more diverse jobs. What are your priorities going to be for 2017? Globally, it's uh, creativity, growth, talent. Absolutely nailing diversity of talent mm -hmm. and diversity of capability. And Tarun. Well, um, I, I couldn't agree with her more. Uh, going forward for our clients uh, and for us, there is going to be so much disruption. We, have, we, we haven't even seen it. I mean, even though even the clients are going to uh, demand and need a lot of strategy planning, and especially J. Walter Thompson, who invented planning, I think it's incumbent for us to beef up our, our planning departments, our strategic planning. I'd like Tarun to ask Tamara one question. Tamara, one question to Tarun. So I ask a difficult question, you'll ask me an even harder question. I'll ask question. you an easy <laughs> one. Uh, so you have been to now Mumbai, Bangalore, and now in, in New Delhi. Yes. Uh, what is that one thing that uh, that is common between uh, all that you have experienced in India so far? The most extraordinary thing about India is uh, her people. Everything I experience is warmth, generosity, and of course, a great argument. <laughs> a lot of discussion. My question to you is what is the secret source of your success, Terry? The team, the team around me. Uh, individuals are important, but it's always teams that win. Cool. On that note, thank you very much, Tamara, Tarun, for joining us. Thank, thank you. you so much. And uh, would love to have you back on the show and see me next year. <laughs> <laughs> So clearly, going forward, bringing together the disparate and diverse platforms and services will be one of the key reasons for creative agencies to remain relevant, which are still struggling to find the long-lost status. Now moving on, the Christmas season is on and who's winning the battle of becoming the best Christmas ad?